thank you for attending our Get Into Motorsport evening. It's great to see so many of you here tonight. Um, I'm Laura, I'm the Club Development Officer at Anglia Motorsport Club. Before we start, I'm just going to give you a very brief overview of this event um, and what we hope you might get out of it. So we ran this event for the first time last year, um, our Get Into Motorsport evening. It was really successful. Now, the reason behind us running this is because I think, as we're all aware, we all know about the Elite Force of Motorsport, Formula One, the World Rally Championship, and it's probably that that hooked our interest in motorsport. But we might not all be aware of the um, various forms of motorsport, the roles and disciplines that you can actually take part in on your doorstep that are probably taking place and you just might not have heard about it before. So this evening, we're going to be running you through um, the various opportunities available, specifically here in East Anglia. Um, we're going to be going through the various disciplines and roles. Um, and the presentation element is going to last around an hour. So we will talk you through what, what each discipline is, what you need, how to get involved. Um, and then we're going to go into a bit more of an interactive element afterwards. So there'll be a break for teas, coffees, we've got plenty of cake. Um, and then you'll have the opportunity to talk to our local ambassadors. So we're very lucky to be joined today um, by local ambassadors competing in the region representatives from motorsport clubs and the national governing body, Motorsport UK, and we're very lucky to have some representatives here today. So any questions you have, I'm sure we've got the right people in the room here to answer. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to answer, uh, ask them at any point this evening. Put your hand up during the presentation and we'll do our best to answer it, or if not, keep hold of it and come and speak to us after. Um, so, I think we're ready to start. So I'd like to introduce you to Laura and Vinny, who will be joining me tonight hosting the evening. Um, like myself, we've all been involved in motorsport for a, quite, a, quite a while now, since a young age, so I'll let them introduce themselves to you. Go on, Laura, you're first. Okay, so um, my name's Laura Christmas, don't confuse with Laura Coolidge, I know it's very confusing. Um, I got into motorsport from the age of about 14, and my father got me involved. Um, he got involved with friends when he was um, in his early 20s and then took a bit of a break and then when I was old enough he got me involved. So I started doing production car trials which we're going to talk to you about a bit later um, and worked way, my way up through almost all of the events that we're going to talk to you about tonight um, and I feel really lucky to have been got involved at a young age and been welcomed into such a warm and welcoming um, community of motorsports. Um, Vinnie Cruz, first of all, thank you very much for coming. This is a massive tonight. That's brilliant. Thank you. And it's really nice to see some very young people here as well. As we discussed, we really want to get more people, young people, involved in all this. Um, I was born in Brazil, but been in the UK for about 20 years. Back in Brazil, I did a fair bit of karting, uh, lots of off-road stuff. And then in the UK, I was told about grassroots motorsports. Didn't realise what this all was. And it's absolutely brilliant. You can do stuff on your own road car, which is awesome. Got involved in auto solo through a friend. From then on, discovered Tiger rallies, uh, which we're going to discuss about. Uh, and I also do stage rallies uh, now. Um, so I guess, yeah, that's it. Oh, a lot of people selected on the forum that they are interested in engineering. Um, I'm a motorsport engineer, so if anyone wants to talk to me about that, particularly young people looking for a career or anything like this, Feel free to come and talk to me afterwards about it as well. Brilliant. Now, in terms of my Anglia Motorsport colleagues, we're joined here by Dan, the club chairman, and Brian, and they're going to just give a little overview of their involvement as well. Okay, so I'm Dan Pearson, chairman of Anglia Motorsport Club. i um, been involved in motorsport since probably the age of six, um, in car trials, passenger in the back of um, the family's Fit 500. Um, and then from the age of 14 I started competing in auto solos um, and predominantly nowadays found organising events. So yesterday I was clerking a solo down at Devon Airfield. Um, get great pleasure out of seeing competitors come back with a smile on their face after they've enjoyed themselves on a good day out. So that's me. Right. Good evening. I get all the boring stuff to do but I'll try and keep it very short. Now being club treasurer it's my job to tell you Entry was free, however, getting out... No, no. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so, Andy Motorsport... Do you want me to just come on? Oh, wait. oh before we go oh, on okay, to that, right. see, this is Ben and Sam. They'll be talking a little bit later, so you'll hear more yeah. from them in a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the background to motorsport events is they're pretty much all organised by clubs. 
and the clubs are registered to Most Sport UK, which is the governing body in the country. So they all run to a set of rules. So being a member of a club is kind of important. But what club you're a member of is not as important, because in this region, what we've done is we've come together. So all 12 clubs in this region, which actually put on events, actually all came together under the heading of Anglia Motorsport Club. So once you've joined one, you become a member of the whole piece, in a sense. So you don't have to look around. It makes it a lot more simply. So choosing the actual club you're going to join is about who you get on with, where you live, and what they do. And that's the important stuff. It's more important to figure out how you want to get involved in motorsport than it is which club you're going to run with. So hopefully that's the end of the boring stuff, except the bit we missed that said no fires are planned. However, if there are, the two exits are there. Can I just add something to that? You cannot join Anglia Motorsport Club as a club. You can join any of those in Anglia. It's an umbrella club that helps coordinating the resources to put on the events. Is that fair? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, in terms of opportunities, these might look a little bit confusing right now. You might think, I'm not sure what this is. So, we're going to be going through each of these disciplines now, one by one, really explaining it as clearly as we can, exactly what it's all about, what you need, and how you can get involved. And we're going to come back to this later with a brief explanation, again, of what it is, because it will get a bit confusing, so much information from it. You come and talk to us as well later. So the first discipline we're going to talk about is production car trials. This is the way I actually got involved, age 14, so you compete in this from age 14. Um, and it's all about how far you can get across the course rather than how fast you get there. So this is one of our disciplines that are more around skill, the way that you can control a car rather than speed. Um, so what you will find yourself is there will be a course um, laid out across a hillside and there will be 12 <coughs> pairs of gates. You can see in this photo we've got some that are orange, some that are white. Um, and what you have to do is you have to get as far through the course as possible between those gates. It sounds very simple, however, you'll be traversing the course uphill, downhill, it's going to be very muddy, very slippy. And you really, really have to work hard on your clutch control, on your knowledge of the car, its spatial awareness, um, in order to manipulate that car and get that as far as possible. Now this is a really, really easy discipline to get involved in. So pretty much any road going car will do the trick. Um, you'll see outside there's a number of cars that actually can compete in car trials. Um, and at the end of the day, it's the driver with the least point that wins. So the way it works with most sports, we want to score goals, we want to score whatever it is, we want to get the most points possible. But with this, it's a little bit different. So I mentioned those 12 gates um, laid out, whether you're going uphill, downhill, it might be a bit of both. You want to get through all of those 12 gates to get a zero, what we call a clear. So the first gate you'll see is number 12, 11, 10. And if you hit a post or you don't get as far and you come to a stop, you get that score. So the aim is that you want to clear that hill. Um, and yeah, then it all adds up at the end of the event. Um, now in terms of entry fees, they're very, very cheap. So you can get a full day's motorsport for around 30 to 40 pounds, which is pretty much the same price as what you pay for an hour and a half football match. So that's great. And it's also a really nice family day out. So for me, when I started, when I was age 14, um, my dad and I would double drive. So you can have, you can enter in one car and two of you can compete. Um, and it's just a great family day out. I think there's a lot of families together, there's that rivalry, um, and it's a good way to get started. It's also a great discipline where if you want to bring someone along with you and they don't necessarily want to drive, they can come a passenger for you because it's very difficult to find grip and you'll often need your passenger to bounce for you, which is quite literally jumping up and down on the seat. So if someone wants to come along with you to see what it's all about, they don't quite yet want to drive, then this is a great way to do it. Laura, are there classes, uh, different classes, and what sort of cars turn up for, for these sort of things? Yeah, so the clue is in the name with this, production car trial. So it's all about testing a production car, a car that's come out of the manufacturing line as it is. Um, so there's classes for front wheel drive cars, rear wheel drive, um, but also there's a special class for cars that have driven to the event. 
So with this discipline, you can quite literally <coughs> drive to the event, take part in it all day and drive back home. And I've got a couple of Citroen Saxos, like the one you've just seen on there, that I compete in. Bought them for probably a few hundred pounds and we have great fun. And you can also use them for the other disciplines like auto solos and targets. Now, Laura also started out in this discipline. I did, so I was also about 14 years old when I did this. This was my first type of motor sport event that I ever did. And I remember vividly pulling up into the, um, the, the paddock area field and um, my dad knew I'd never been behind the wheel before but um, he was also worried about moving the trailer out of the way of other people and getting the car to scrutineering where they checked the car is just suitable for the event. So he said, get in, turn the key and just move it over there. And I was like, okay, right. <laughs> And it, it literally is throw you in the deep end but have an amazing time. Now as someone who had never driven a car before, it was a great opportunity because it was a safe environment where people were going to make sure that I was being safe um, and it, it's a low speed event but it's a very technical event um, as Laura was explaining about going between the gates. It's amazing for learning about clutch control, you're trying to do hill starts, on a muddy, muddy field and you just don't get those opportunities on the road when you're learning to drive at the age of 17 um, and actually it, it gives you skills as a driver that you're then able to apply to much more high speed events all the way up to stage rally. So it's a great place to start, it's lots of fun and low pressure because it is that um, family community feel where everyone wants you to be successful, everyone's cheering you on, the marshals are giving you a push up the hill if you get stuck. Um, so yeah, definitely fun, great way to get involved. And as you can see, you can compete in pretty much anything. So this is Laura competing in a Fiat 126. Yeah, um, I think my dad told me that he bought it for £100 about 40 years ago. So that doesn't <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it's a, a rust bucket that he keeps trying to repair and get back on the road. And it, it was ideal for it because he wasn't worried about me messing it up if it did go wrong. It didn't, by the way. It's okay. It's still intact. <laughs> so a lot of these events, you've got the option to either trailer a car in or drive the car to it. Some of the classes, like Laura mentioned, if you want to, want to enter that specific class, like auto solos, you have to drive the car in. You have to have an OT tax and insurance. That keeps everything quite level for, for everyone. So you can't turn up with a heavily modified car that you, or a car that is not actually roadworthy. So just to clarify, in terms of production car trials, all you would need to participate in one of those, in fact there's one this weekend, is a car. Um, you would need a um, join a local motorsport club. That's probably going to set you back about £10-£15 for the whole year. It will also give you access to an amazing community of like-minded people who can support you in this. And what we call an RS Clubman licence. And we'll be referring to this um, quite a lot probably tonight. So what this is, is it is a free licence that you get from our national governing body, Motorsport UK, that allows you to compete. And you can get it literally within five minutes online, you put in your details and it will give you the PDF. And you need that licence in order to participate. So it's really, really low cost and you've probably already got all you need to actually go and take part in one of these. How much are production car trials, the events themselves? Probably between around 30 or 40 pounds per day, and also sometimes there's subsidised fees for junior drivers. So if you're under the age of 18, um, it might be cheaper, it might be more around the 15, 20 pound mark. Just depends on the event and the club running it. So you can start doing motorsport at grassroots level for about 50 quid, or 40 quid for the event and 10, 15 quid to join the club and have access to all of the sorts of uh, disciplines. And if you're not quite at that age of 14, or you've got a son, daughter, friend, someone who wants to get involved, you can passenger from a young age. So I remember my mum and dad doing a car trial when I was very, very young, and me and my brother, aged very little, sitting in the back, you know, enjoying bouncing. Probably not. Really? Yeah. So it's um, it's a really family friendly uh, discipline for sure. And it's extremely friendly in terms of um, people. You break down. There's like 10 people around you trying to get your car going again in all the disciplines that we're going to talk about. People are extremely friendly and it's, there is a competition, people want to win, want to do well, but there is a lot more of the social side uh, to it, it's quite a community. Definitely. So our next discipline, I'm not going to speak about this is Vinny's forte for sure. <laughs> okay, auto solos and auto tests, I'm absolutely passionate about this discipline. 
Um, when someone told me that I could uh, turn up in a road car to compete in an event and even be even be competitive for like 40 quid, I said, no, that's not possible. That that doesn't exist. Well, it does. It's called Auto Solos. Um, I'll give you an idea of what the event is and how it works. You can see a video there of me just playing about with my Toyota MR2. That's an auto solo test. The aim is not to drift. All I'm doing there is having fun. If you're going sideways, you're not going forward, so that's not good. But it's something that you can do in an auto solo. Right, so auto solo tests are defined by, comb, by combs. Um, and you drive around them as fast as you can. We usually have uh, four different tests in the morning, you drive them about three times, and then four different tests in the afternoon, you drive them three times or whatever. Cost is about between 40 and 70 quid, depending on where you are in the country. Uh, certainly cost effective. Um, types of cars that you can turn up with, whatever. The regulations are super open, even modified cars can turn up. Uh, there is a specific class for cars that are not roadworthy and very modified. Um, and classes are divided between um, up to 1400cc, above 1400, and then sports cars like MX-5s, and then a class for patrons and that sort of stuff. Um, so you've got the chance of doing well in all different classes. However, the brilliant thing about Auto Solo is it does not matter what you turn up. You can have a super powerful car, you might, it doesn't matter. I usually do well in a Peugeot 106 1.4, which is parked up there. I actually won my class yesterday in an event and I finished third overall in an auto solo event against MX-5. <coughs> what else was there? A bath? Yeah, there was all sorts there. I've, I've even took part in a Peugeot 806 people carrier. That's the kind <laughs> yeah. of thing you can take part in, honestly. Yeah. Anything, anything goes uh, on auto solos. Um, what else? Ages. Another brilliant thing about auto solos is you can actually start racing F14. So there is a specific class that you have to have someone that is experienced with you or just have a driving license. Um, and from 14 you can start competing. I've, in a road car, it's just brilliant. The key point is, I was a 14 year old back in Brazil where the laws are a bit, uh, so I could do whatever I liked there, right? You try and do anything here, yeah, but you get locked up. So from 14, you can handbrake, you can wheel spin, you can do whatever you like in a controlled, safe environment. So when your young lad or young girl gets to 18 and get their driving license, they are a way safer driver out there. They will know how to control a car in an emergency situation. Um, what else about auto solo? Ask some questions so I remember what else we can talk about. So the cones are marked with um, letters or numbers depending on yeah, where you are. Yeah. Um, and you follow the, the letter or the numbering, um, counting up or counting down. And they normally reverse the test in the afternoon as well after a lunch break. So you, you drive throughout the day. And I would say it's actually quite exhausting and tiring because you're driving so much. And I think, you know, you book a track day and pay a couple of hundred pounds and you get about two minutes out of the track. And it's not like that. What it is, is a full day of driving, full day of competing. You're in and out of the car, so you're socialising with other competitors. Um, and it's, you know, it's simple to follow. You get given a map. We've got some map examples on the side that you can go and have a look at later. So you learn the route, it's quite short, um, maximum about probably 30, 30 sets of cones. Yeah, about that. So you can learn the route, um, and they're patterns that you become familiar with, particularly if you go to the same sort of events, um, run by similar clubs in this area, um, and it's, it's something that teaches you all the skills you need to then use to go on to faster events, so you're talking about 30 mile per hour average, but I'm sure for, from anyone who has tried it, we say it doesn't feel like that. It feels much quicker and you get that adrenaline rush like you do in any other kind of motorsport. Yeah, and at, on auto solos you are constantly on the limit of the tyre, either on power, braking or turning, and it's a brilliant school to learn how much you can actually extract the car from the car, um, particularly people who are into karting and that sort of stuff. You know that if you put too much steering, you scrub speed off and all that sort of stuff. This is perfect to master how much you can extract out of, uh, out of a car. So talk us about an event start to finish. 
when you get there, what do you expect? What things do you have to go through before you compete? Yeah. How does the day look? So um, the events are held on either car parks or our area tends to be in uh, airfields. So that's a, one example of the picture you can see on the background. Quite open area. Um, you arrive, you have to drive the car to the event if you are on an auto solo uh, class. If you are, there are different classes. If you need detail, talk to me. But if you, if you want to trailer a car in, you can as well. Um, and then after that, you go through scrutineering, which sounds scary for this level of motorsport. You don't need to worry. As long as your car is safe, you've got black and round tires, road legal-ish. Um, <laughs> your seatbelts work, your brakes work, your steering is not flopping all the way all around. You are going to be OK. Right? Um, you have to have a multi tax and insurance. So. Um, so you go through scrutineering. They will check your car. They will give a piece of paper saying that your car passed. They do a noise test because most venues are noise restricted. You take all that paperwork, you go to the signing on uh, trailer, and then there they're going to give you a full pack of, of with your number and maps uh, for the tests. And if the event is being sponsored, they will give you, give you stickers as well so you can put on the car. And then from then on, what you do, the tests are already laid out by our incredible organizers. They turn up on the day before and lay all the tests out. Everything is ready for you the next day in the morning. So you drive to the test. You're not obviously allowed to drive the test, but you can walk in. So there are maps of, example, of tests on a table over there. Not yet. Uh, no, people won't be able to see it. I can't see it from here. <laughs> not that I can see well here. Um, yeah. So we can have a look at maps later. The maps are super simple. Uh, just gates, two cones to find gates, and one or one standalone uh, cone. The cone that is standalone will have another cone telling you which direction to go around that cone. So it, it really, it's really hard to get completely wrong. And you have the chance to walk the test as many times as you want. So you turn up. Everybody will try and get scrutinizing done quickly and then go and walk the tests as many times as they can. Some people run them, I do, to try and really memorize them. We're not all as fit as you, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, right, you get a talk from the clerk of the course, which yesterday was done, explaining how the day is going to run. By that time, all the marshals are in their locations, and marshals are special type of person because they turn up and they help out no matter the, the weather. Yesterday, I guess you know, the weather was terrible and we had, what, 20 marshals? If not 20, more. 25 marshals out, stood in the slight rain, a little yeah, bit of wind, a, a bit of cold. cold. <laughs> yeah, but they are there, they are just brilliant. So marshals are in place and then everyone goes to the test that they are meant to start at. Um, the marshal doing the timing will tell you, start whenever you're ready, and they start the clock when you cross uh, the start line. You do your run, and then there's a box where you have to stop in, and the clock stops whenever you cross the first line of that box. Those times, all those seconds, are summed up, and then at the end of the day, um, whoever's got less seconds obviously wins. But we have usually have awards for class, so first, second, and third on up to 1.4 class, and then above 1.4, so you get a fair few awards, options, uh, depending on the class that you are. Um, to reiterate a point you made earlier as well, often you find at these events, it's not the most powerful car that wins. And, you know, if you're not able to pump money into the sport, that's what's quite nice about this type of event, because you know that regardless of what car you turn up in, you have as much chance as anyone else at being successful. It's about having a clean day. We always say, if we make mistakes, we're kicking ourselves because we know that that's going to have a bigger impact than how fast we're going. And actually, it's about making sure that you're sticking to the route, not making a mistake of where you're going, not clipping a cone, um, keeping it tidy, and that's going to help you to be more successful. And that's going to mean you get the results. So I remember when I first started, I was with my uncle, and he said, just drive around steady, there's no need to spin the wheels, as Vinny alluded to earlier. Whilst you're sliding around, you're not going forwards. So drive nice and steady, and you'll be surprised how quick you actually are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, two more things to mention. Penalties, yeah, you're hit at cone, you get five seconds penalties. penalty. You didn't stop on the box where you meant to stop, you get a penalty, you get the test wrong, you get a penalty. So, And it is very, very tight. Um, 
Laura and I have finished 0.2 of a second from each other before out of 900 seconds on the day. So you see how tight it can be. It is ridiculous. So if you want to be competitive, this is brilliant. So yesterday event was, um, it was very, very harsh because the weather was terrible and we didn't know how much grip we had and you only find out when you get to the corner. So everyone spun, everyone crashed into cones, not crashed, clipped cones and all that. Not quite sure everyone did, Vinny, but you've done a really good job of that. <laughs> I did, I yeah. I was certainly a cone magnet yesterday. But anyway, we all finished very close together anyway. So question? Yeah, are they pay as you go or do you have to sign up for a season? No, pay as you go. So you do whatever events you want, and if you do a minimum amount of events, you qualify for the challenge, which is a championship, but we call it challenge. So with all of this, you can, you can choose as much or as little as you like. So yeah. um, for me, it would be doing a few production car trials, a few rallies, whatever you want to do, you can pick and choose events. You're not signed up to do, once you decide on discipline, you don't have to do a full season or anything. You can just think, right, I want to do this event this weekend and go and do that one. If you enjoy it, go and do more. If you don't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, yeah. Not at all. And we are talking about events that happen around this area, but the same formats, the same events, takes place all over the country. So you don't obviously you don't need to stick to this area only if you've got the option to go somewhere else, you can. Uh, we are very, very active in this area of the country on all the events that you're gonna see here. Um, and one last thing before we move on is that with auto solos and um, there has been some exciting news in terms of on the world stage whereby you actually can participate and represent your country as Laura Christmas did this year. Yeah, yeah so um Actually, Vinny and I entered a competition that was set up by MS UK a couple of years ago um, and it was to be selected um, to represent the UK at the Motorsport Games which was held in France, Marseille this year, uh, last October. And um, it was <coughs> for an auto slalom competition and basically that's what they call auto solo in Europe and it's a slightly different structure but basically follows the same pattern um, and at the competition, which was held in Oxford, went down there, drove like I normally would in an auto solo, and they took three times, and basically fastest man, male and fastest female, went on and got selected. So I was really lucky to be selected, and then went to the games in October and um, represented the UK. And uh, my driving partner, Mark and I, oh, our results counted together as a team, and it's really nice because it was actually the only um, discipline out of the 16 disciplines that were held at the Motorsport Games that um, had 50% female entry and 50% male entry. So it was really positive for promoting women's involvement in motorsport, but also promoting a grassroots event that anyone can participate in. Um, and we were really happy to um, finish in 12th position out of 25 countries that entered. And um, if it wasn't for a knockout round, we would have come seven. But you know. That's how it works, so yeah, we're very happy. So you can, you know, get to bigger events from something that seems really small and local. So there's opportunities there. She says that she was lucky, but she absolutely trashed all the other competitors. I got trashed by Mark. He's a, a Irish auto test champion. So he was like two seconds, I was two seconds off his pace. So very good, very strong team went to be able to represent us. So that's very good. So we